Hello and uh, good afternoon to you all. Um, just actually waiting a, a couple of minutes for the attendees to all sort of flood in. Um, welcome to this week's uh, webinar from Thomas Westcott. Um, for those of you sort of uh, coming on the call uh, with a sense of deja vu, uh, don't worry, we have actually run this before, so it's not deja vu at all, but we thought that given the new rules for the VAT reverse charge coming in on the 1st of March, it would be a timely um, update on the legislation and practical points on uh, what you as a business owner need to do. So um, good afternoon to you. My name is Patrick Tickwell. I'm a general practice partner with the firm at the Exeter and Tiverton offices. And again, it's my, uh, uh, my pleasure to be your host uh, for this afternoon's uh, webinar. Um, what's the plan today? Well, we've allocated about an hour again. So up until about three o'clock. Um, in a minute, we'll hear from our two uh, very learned speakers and, and after which uh, we can explore the many questions actually we've received. Um, so I'll get to the questions in a minute, but just to um, uh, introduce our speakers today. Um, they're both from uh, the TW Plymouth office, uh, but obviously I don't hold that against them too much. We have um, Annette Stone and she will be covering off the legislation aspects of, of the uh, DRC, Domestic Reverse Charge, following which Sean, uh, Sean Bolter will be sort of addressing the more practical aspects, as I say, that you as a business owner will need to be aware of. Uh, we have had a lot of questions um, sort of delivered and to us on as part of the registration process, and we will try and get to all of those. Um, We'll either cover them obviously through the guides presentations or we'll kind of uh, get to them at the end and just sort of run through them all. Um, if you haven't asked a question but you still would like to, you still can, there's a sort of Q&A button down there, just, just use that. Um, if you get to the, if we get to the end of the webinar and you still, you know, something occurs to you afterwards, just email us at events at thomaswestcott.co.uk and we'll attend to uh, any questions raised that way. I'd like to thank, uh, you can't see her, she's uh, muted herself and taken her camera off, but Elisa Freeman, who's part of our uh, marketing team, who is organizing the webinar today. So if it all goes a bit peak tong, it's all her fault, um, which is good for me, uh, but hopefully it will be fine. And uh, so thanks for her efforts. Uh, and without further ado, because obviously we've got a lot to get through, I'll hand over to, um, Annette for her presentation. Thank you, Patrick. And I'm pleased to hear that you um, haven't introduced me by saying that I'm dealing with the dull bits <laughs> of the VAT legislation. I will try and make this section as interesting as I possibly can. So let's get started. Well, the domestic reverse charge has been a long time coming and it was delayed for 18 months. HMRC in their generosity um, should have implemented this on the 1st of October, 2019. It's now being implemented on the 1st of March, 2021. So given the extension of the implementation, <clears throat> uh, is the construction industry any better prepared well, I'm sure you can all answer that for yourself. Um, obviously, we're delighted by the number of attendees today that um, it's a good acknowledgement. Let's start with the positive. It's a good acknowledgement that you recognise that these rules will possibly affect you. You may already know the basics of the domestic reverse charge or you're here to learn um, what it is, um, the, the rules as to when you implement it and the important aspects, uh, which are the practical um, responsibilities for you. Um, so between Sean and myself, we'll, we'll cover all of those points. Um, but let's start with what it is. And it is essentially the mechanism where the business who's making payment for construction services now becomes responsible for self-accounting. So that's the reporting and payment of VAT. So as if the construction industry doesn't have enough 
to contend with on a monthly basis with the administration. Um, this is now another aspect in addition to those monthly CIS returns, in addition to verification procedures, CIS statements, and deducting CIS correctly. These requirements now involve the change of accounting systems, different VAT return entries, and a change in the way that VAT will be collected and accounted for in the building and construction industry. So let's have a look at the legislation because we this is where we need to start to make a decision as to whether it applies. So the VAT domestic reverse charge will only apply to construction operations which are reported under CIS. So we look to the definition of the CIS rules within the legislation itself. And the domestic reverse charge will apply between a subcontractor and a contractor or a deemed contractor. So that is, for an example, a third party property investor who spends more than a million pounds on construction. But what are construction operations? Construction operations are carrying out work to the fabric of a building or part of a building which is being converted but it excludes the incorporation or installation of fittings um, it then extends to carrying out work within the immediate site of the building in connection with the means of providing water power heat or access to the building or providing drainage or security or the provision of means of waste disposal for the building. It also includes all works of repair, maintenance, decoration or improvement. For example, the construction of an extension or the installation of double glazing to the fabric of the building where this work forms an intrinsic part of changing the number of dwellings. It does not include subsequent repairs. So this, this is post snagging works um, and sometime after the completion, it would not include um, sub subsequent repairs. But what are also not um, covered as construction operations are the installation of goods that are not building materials such as carpets and fitted bedroom furniture, the manufacturing of building equipment or components and delivery of site, the hire of goods and that's something that came up within our questions, routine landscaping, the provision of professional services such as those provided by architects, surveyors, consultants, unless it's the provision of site project management services. And this is an um, important aspect to consider because this may be incorrectly missed, but it is subject to um, CIS. Um, the installation of seating and blinds and shutters. But there is a specific exclusion, as there always is when it comes to VAT. Um, now, where the CIS element of a supply is less than 5% of the services being supplied, then the domestic reverse charge does not apply. But once you exceed 5% of your services falling within the construction industry scheme, then the whole invoice, and that's including goods, is subject to the domestic reverse charge. So, from the 1st of March, so just over a couple of weeks time, these new regulations come into force that will change the way that VAT is accounted for in some transactions within the construction industry. And these new regulations apply to construction services, not just to labour only builds. Hence, the charges include goods where these goods are supplied with the certain specific services that we've covered. And then when we consider the different rates of VAT, the reverse charge applies to supplies 
subject to 5% and 20% VAT, but not those that are zero rated. However, I am going to show you an example where a zero rated construction actually has um, an incidence where domestic reverse charge should be applied. So I'm going to take you through that in a minute. Um, but as we've said, the domestic reverse charge rules are closely aligned to those defined as construction operations under CIS. Now, why are these rules being implemented? Well, HMRC identified they had a huge problem and this huge problem um, related to subcontractors who were carrying out um, construction services, registering VAT, invoicing the contractors with the application of VAT, collecting the VAT, but then the VAT not making its way back to HMRC. So construction industry, you have now become the collector of taxes for HMRC. You are now the responsible person for reporting and accounting for VAT on their behalf. So let's have a look at the current rules. So um, as you are aware, and I'm starting to use these specific definitions because end user status is very important when we're looking at the domestic reverse charge. And I will go through the definition of end user as we go through this. But if we, if we say that the end user in this scenario is a transport company and they wish to expand, so they have um, engaged a building company um, in order to build their new transport office. The building company have engaged the services of subcontractors to work on the building project. So under the current rules, the supply of goods and services from the subcontractors to the contractors will be invoiced with standard rated VAT applied. The contractors will then invoice the end user, being the transport company, for their services with standard rated VAT apply. All seems very simple. We all understand these rules, but they're going to change them. So we're now going to have a look at the new rules. Exactly the same scenario, but subcontractors. You will not be charging VAT on your invoices to the building company. Um, but this will only be where the subcontractor and the contractor are both VAT registered. If that is the case, then it is the building company themselves who will account for VAT to HMRC. So that will be both as input VAT and output VAT. Now the position for the contractor themselves will remain unchanged because the transport company is an end user. And as an end user, it will notify the contractor that it is and will go through the responsibilities of the end user, but the contractor will still continue to invoice with standard rated VAT for their supply. Hope you're all still with me. Um, so we're going to move on to um, an example because I've covered standard rated VAT. This is an example where the end user um, is actually um, the zero rated supply in the chain because I, I want um, you to understand that even if there is an N zero rated supply, the domestic reverse charge can still actually apply. So in this case, the end user is a nursing home group. They own the land and they wish to have a new nursing home built, which is of course zero rated. 
They provide the building company with their certificate of use, which enables the building company to issue their invoice at zero rate. But for the subcontractor, the domestic reverse charge still applies. Now, the reason for this is because they are not directly engaged by the zero rated supply to the end user. They have been engaged by the contractor. So ordinarily, they would still be charging that at 20%. But because of the domestic reverse charge rules, they will not charge the VAT, but the building company themselves will still account for VAT to HMRC, as in the previous example, at standard rate at, as both an input and an output, but they will invoice on to the nursing home group themselves at zero rate. So if we look at another rate of VAT, let's look at the reduced rate. And just to take you through where reduced rate VAT at 5% applies, this is where we're dealing with qualified services supplied in the course of conversion of commercial to residential or a conversion into a different number of dwellings or on building work on a dwelling that's been empty for at least two years. And of course, in order to qualify, um, there must be um, confirmation from, let's say, a housing officer that that building has been empty for two years. And reduced rate covers the building materials and certain electrical goods which are incorporated into a building by a building who is also supplying reduced rate supply of services. So, um, with the reduced rate of VAT, again, same scenario applies. So where we're looking at the domestic reverse charge, whereas we've previously been saying that the contractor accounts for input and output VAT at 20%, when we're looking at um, the conversions, um, it will operate the same mechanism but at the 5%, so 5% input, 5% output, and the subcontractors working on that conversion will not charge VAT. So when does it not apply? And again, this has come up within our questions. Zero rated supply of house construction, so new builds, for example, are not subject to the reverse charge. When we say new builds, um, we have to be clear that if there has been a previous building on the same site, it must be demolished to ground level to qualify. And if it qualifies as that, it's zero rated and not subject to the reverse charge. So the types of buildings that come under zero rated are residential dwellings, residential home, student accommodation and charitable buildings whether that's lease or freehold, are not subject to the reverse charge. So what's the impact of this reverse charge then? So in the examples, um, the contractor, so the building companies, will have to pay the VAT to HMRC on behalf of the subcontractor. So they will be making an adjustment on their own VAT return instead of paying the VAT across to the supplier of services and goods. So instead of paying the VAT across to the subcontractor, the building company will also claim the input VAT on its own VAT returns. Now, here's the risk. The contractor takes on a risk if the domestic reverse charge has not been applied by the subcontractor. So as a contractor, after the 1st of March, if you receive an invoice from your subcontractors and it's for um, a CIS operation, um, then you should be querying that invoice um, and should be rejecting it because if you accept 
an invoice that you know should be subject to the new domestic reverse charge rules, HMRC can actually deny your input VAT claim. So it's really important that you talk to your subcontractors about this. Now, the building company themselves will charge VAT in the usual way if they are engaged by an end user. And I am gonna take you through end user status. But what, what steps do you need to take? Well, as I've just mentioned, as a contractor, because you are taking the risk, you should review contractor, contracts with your subcontractors to see if the reverse charge should apply. And you should pre-warn them um, that they will be changing the way in which they invoice you. As a subcontractor, you um, need to be aware that your cash flow will be affected. So you could consider switching to monthly VAT returns to obtain refunds from inputs quicker to compensate for the loss of cash. Meanwhile, however, the contractors themselves um, from their cash flow position, it should benefit you because you are not physically making the payment across to the subcontractor for their invoices. But going back to the subcontractor, cash accounting or the flat rate supply scheme cannot be accounted for under the reverse charge. But Sean's going to go into the practicalities and how this will affect you in his part of the webinar. End users, I've mentioned end users a couple of times and it's important to um, understand what an end user is because the reverse charge mechanism does not apply to an end user. And an end user is a consumer or an end user of building and construction services. So they're their last part of the construction chain. If you're carrying out work on a domestic property on behalf of an owner of the property, that owner is an end user. So you will invoice in the normal way and you will charge VAT at the appropriate rate. If you're working directly on a premises owned by a contractor, the contractor is the end user. So the reverse charge will not apply. And again, you invoice in the normal way. But if you are working on site under instruction of a main contractor, the main contractor is not an end user. And that's why I have shown you um, the supply chain in my examples, because you will see exactly where the reverse charge should apply. Now, what are the responsibilities for the end user? Well, they will use the construction services for themselves. They will not be selling on those services, otherwise they become part of the reverse charge chain and they will have to operate the scheme. Um, the end user will be a business that does not supply on onward construction services, such as a supermarket, and they can either be VAT registered or exempt businesses and also registered for CIS but they must ensure that the suppliers do not apply the VAT reverse charge on the services which are supplied to them. So responsibility is on the end user to notify the contractor that they are an end user. And the problem is that we can see that some end users may choose not to notify the contractor of their end user status because the position is they may wish to say, stay silent so that they are not charged VAT on the invoices that they are receiving. Now, contractors, um, your default position is to apply the domestic reverse charge. So if your end user does not advise you of their end user status, that is not your responsibility. So that's just to reassure you, it's, it's the responsibility of the end user to provide you with notification of their status. So example of end users are utility companies, retailers, 
manufacturing businesses, property investment companies below the 1 million deemed contractors limit. Um, also, um, a lot of you may carry out work for local authorities and public bodies. Now, they are end users in most cases. So any works carried out on behalf of government departments, councils, NHS bodies, the police and fire and rescue services will be invoiced in the normal way. So HMRC have now released suggested wording for an end user statement. So the end user is responsible for issuing this to the contractor and contractors, if you receive this, then obviously you continue to invoice in the normal way and charge VAT at the appropriate rate. So we've provided you with a flow chart and hopefully um, I've taken you through the legislation to explain how you decide whether the domestic reverse charge applies or not and um, Sean will follow on the practical aspects but just to recap the first question you ask is are the supplies you are making within the scope of CIS because if CIS does not apply then the domestic reverse charge does not apply and you invoice in the normal way. You then have to make a decision as to whether your supply is standard rated or reduced rated. So when you are operating the domestic reverse charge that you get the appropriate rate of VAT correct. If it is a zero rated or exempt supply, then it does not fall within the domestic reverse charge. Although please remember that example, where we do have the subcontractors who will still apply the domestic reverse charge, even though ultimately they're working on um, the building of that zero rated end users supply. Um, is your customer VAT registered? Because the domestic reverse charge can only operate between a VAT registered subcontractor and a VAT registered contractor. If not, then the normal VAT rules apply and VAT must be charged. Again, um, is your, if your payments to be reported under CIS, then the domestic reverse charge will be applied. Has the customer provided confirmation that it is an end user? Have they provided you with that statement that we've just shown? If they have, then you must continue to apply VAT on their invoices. If you have not received notification that they are an end user, then the default position is that the domestic reverse charge must be applied. So hopefully that recaps the legislation nicely for you. And now we're going to move on to Sean's part of the webinar and he's going to talk you through the practical aspects of applying the domestic reverse charge. Yeah, thank, thank you Annette, thank you Annette. And hopefully you're all still awake, shake it off, it's not going to be so bad going forwards. Um, I'm here to talk you through um, the, the practical bit. So we've, we've done the legislation, we've done the rules, um, and hopefully you now understand where in the supply chain you fit and whether your supplies are going to be caught by the domestic reverse charge. If they are, I want to talk you through your correct invoicing and your correct accounting treatments. So before you even get to invoicing as a subcontractor, you should um, enter into a conversation both up and down your supply chain just to make sure you're all au fait with the DRC rules um, and you all know where in the chain you fit. Um, once you've all established and you're happy that the DRC is going to apply across the, the, uh, the chain of supply, um, you should do a couple of checks. Um, one of those checks being to ensure that your customer um, is properly VAT registered. And this can be done at uh, gov.uk forward slash check UK VAT number. So remember for the transactions that do fall within the scheme, 
Uh, no VAT is going to be charged to your customer. The VAT is still detailed on the invoice, but it is now your customer's responsibility to account for the VAT on your behalf. Therefore, that VAT element is no longer going to be payable to you. So if you receive an invoice from a supplier under the domestic reverse charge, again, you must account for the VAT on your supplier's behalf. You then reclaim the VAT in the usual way, um, but the amount of VAT charged on the supply should still be detailed on that invoice. But again, this is not payable to the supplier. Now, all of this is a little bit wordy. So I'm going to pull up a typical sales invoice and just pop a, pop a picture to the words so you can see what's, what's, what's happening. So here's an invoice that you will either be raising or receiving for any reverse charge invoices. And there's a couple of additional items that need to be included on these invoices. First of all, we need to show the, the rate of VAT. So on this particular example, I'm using a thousand pound net sale. I'm gonna use a thousand pound net sale or net purchase throughout my, all of my examples. So um, yeah, your thousand pound net sale is here. Um, and on the invoice, we have stated that the VAT rate is 20%, but it's the 20% reverse charge construction. You either disclose the rate of VAT or the amount of VAT attached to your supply. Secondly, you need to have a statement on your invoice to inform that this invoice has been raised under the domestic reverse charge. So in mine, I've got HMRC's prescribed wording. It's a little bit small, but it does say this invoice has been raised under the reverse charge. VAT Act 94, Section 55A applies. Customer to pay the VAT to HMRC. So no, if we look in the, the subtotal total and balance due amounts, the, the gross sale is there, the, the £1,000. The VAT payable, however, is zero. Um, and it is only the net amount of the invoice that is payable. This is obviously less CIS tax if that's applicable to you. So you've, you've invoiced, but what, is this, what does this actually mean for you? How is this going to affect your cash flows? So over here on the left, this will be your typical invoice that you would have raised before. £1,000 for work done, your VAT element, standard rated, £200 for £1,000, gross invoice £1,200. Previously, your invoices would have been paid net of CIS tax, but gross of VAT. So you get paid your £1,000 for your work done, less the £200 CIS if you're standard rate CIS. That obviously gets paid to HMRC on your behalf, plus your VAT, you receive a thousand pounds for that invoice. Once the DRC comes into effect, because you're no longer charging the VAT element of the invoice, you're no longer going to be receiving the VAT element of the invoice. So for your thousand pounds worth of work done, obviously you're still going to have your CIS deduction, that's still in play. So you're only going to receive 800 pounds for once was a 1200 pounds gross invoice. Therein lies the cash flow problem. So Depending on where your VAT stagger is, you could be experiencing three months receiving less for your invoices than what you're used to. Ultimately, this will all come out in the wash because on your next VAT return, there will be little to no output VAT to pay over to HMRC, but you will still have your, your inputs to reclaim. If if all of your work going forward is going to be caught by the uh, domestic reverse charge, the DRC, it's likely that you're going to end up in a repayment position because you'll have no output tax to pay over, so no sales tax to pay over, but you're still going to be able to reclaim your input tax, that's your purchase tax, so the, the tax on all the purchases that you've made over your VAT period. So that's the mechanics of the scheme. That's the cash flow elements. That's uh, your invoicing covered off. Now let's have a look at your, your VAT return. So I'm going to start with a VAT return prepared by the subcontractor. So the person supplying their services by the domestic reverse charge. And again, we've just used the example of a, a thousand pound net sale. So for the subcontractor, the return is pretty straightforward. So as your customer is accounting for the VAT on your behalf, no VAT is shown or payable 
to HMRC on this return. Um, you simply enter your net sale into box six. Um, and again, please know as you've little or no VAT to pay over, any purchase VAT reclaimable is likely to put you into a refund position. So that's, that's pretty straightforward if you're a subcontractor. If you're a contractor, however, there's a, a couple of additional, uh, additional points. So when you receive your invoice from your subcontractor, again, we're, we're using the example of the thousand pounds here, um, and it's been invoiced via the DRC, you are now accounting for the VAT on your subcontractor's behalf. So your usual box entries are here. So your usual box four, where you reclaim your VAT, that's still there. Your usual box seven to disclose your, your net purchase figure, that's still there. But in addition to those two boxes, we're now putting in 200 pounds into box one, which is your supplier's output tax. So because you've got 200 pounds in box one, and you've also got 200 pounds in box four, this makes the net effect on your VAT return neutral because you're both paying over and reclaiming on the same invoice. Um, but it's important to note that only stands if you are wholly taxable. If we've got anybody watching today who's partially exempt, um, please, please, please get in touch with your local TW contract, um, contact who will be able to advise you further because depending on the supply, depending on your partial exemption, you may have different elements that you can you can reclaim. So that's the compliance pieces covered off. Um, so we've, we've looked at your VAT returns, your cash flow, your invoicing. What should you now be doing or what can you now do to get yourself ready for the DRC? So most importantly, there's going to be a lot of education. So you need to talk upstream and downstream on your supply chain to make sure everybody knows where they are in the chain what they're doing, how they should be invoicing, and what they should be expecting to be getting Shopping paid. Shopping is an activity in which a customer browses oh. the available goods or services stopped? presented by one or more I'm sorry. with the potential intent to purchase. <laughs> don't buy Apple products. We don't like Siri. Oh, no, I've said her name again, haven't I? Okay. <laughs> that went well. So what can you do now? If you're a flat rate trader for VAT, um, you need to switch schemes now. Because if you're flat rate for VAT, you will be paying over a percentage of what you receive. Um, and obviously because you're not receiving the VAT element, you're, it makes no commercial sense. You're actually going to be earning less money. You're, 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 you'll be receiving less. Equally, if you're cash accounting for VAT, you need to consider if this is practical um, to remain on the scheme because switching to invoice accounting will accelerate the recovery of any input VAT sooner. And if you aren't already, apply for gross status for your CIS. This will stop the CIS deductions and help keep your cash flow steady. Um, again, if you're going to be wholly caught by the DRC, then consider changing to monthly VAT returns as this will enable you to accelerate the recovery of input back sooner. Um, finally, if you're voluntarily registered for VAT and you expect to stay below the VAT threshold, consider deregistering as that will remove the DRC um, from you completely. So, Thank you for listening. Apologies about um, my, my Apple product going wrong. Um, and I'm now going to pass back over to Patrick so that we can do some questions. Thanks, Sean. And um, yes, did you just want to uh, stop screen sharing so the lovely viewers can see all our lovely faces? A, mm. <laughs> put it back on, put it back on. <laughs> yeah, um, yes, thanks uh, very much, guys. Um, uh, just to sort of update, um, I was a bit mean to about Annette's presentation on the first webinar, hence uh, I called it a little bit dry, I think. Um, so it's anything but this time, so excellent. Um, so <laughs> so that, that's what that was about. Um, yeah, right, on to the 
uh, questions. We've got sort of 20 minutes, so we should be able to um, crack on through quite a few. Um, we did have one in the chat. Um, this was asked from Steffi Heslop uh, when you were talking, Annette. Uh, so I don't know if you can answer this one. Um, it's whether the cert various services would, would or not be sort of in, uh, relevant for the reverse charge. And she's saying, would that mean a flooring contractor would not be applicable for reverse charge VAT or in the scheme? Um, <laughs> as, as in most cases, and um, often when us tax uh, individuals answer questions, I'm going to have to say it depends um, because um, if we're talking about um, CIS, it all depends on the type of flooring. It, ca it can the rules can be that intricate um, that we'd have to look at the different types of flooring. The general rule is um, that if it is um, covering the floor, so if it's carpet fitting, for example, um, then um, the domestic reverse charge does not apply. Um, but perhaps um, we can have a one-to-one -one conversation um, about um, the exact specifics of, of what you'd like to look at. Yeah, thanks, Annette. I think on that point, um, I would just mention that um, obviously we're getting asked a lot of bespoke questions to your individual circumstances. Um, if you, know, you feel there is a training need for you or your business, do feel free to contact Annette or Sean um, who can provide you with a bespoke training solution for you uh, to get you up to speed on your specific circumstances. So, uh, yeah, they are there. Do use them and get in contact with them. Um, just a couple more questions we've received on the Q&A function here. Um, uh, Sean, this is probably one for you. You obviously mentioned about cash flow switching to monthly VAT returns from quarterly. Um, how do you go about that? Okay, that's, that's going to be quite straightforward. If you phone um, HMRC VAT services, uh, the telephone number, if you've got a pen handy, is 0300 200 3700. Um, and you should be able to, to switch yourself via, um, via, via their, their, their telephone service. Alternatively, you, you should be able to do it through your uh, gov.uk government gateway site. Okay, thank you. That was from Catherine Ewings. One from Turner, if we are a subcontractor, but we pay other subcontractors to a VAT return, how does that work? I imagine it's just another step in the in the chain. But um, Annette, do you want to field that one? It is indeed, because although you may be a subcontractor, to your, to your subcontractor, you are engaging them for their services. So if the interaction of your services means that they are providing you with construction operations and you are both fat registered parties, then the domestic reverse charge applies. Okay, thanks for that. Um, my wife has just brought me this. So, Sean, don't have nightmares. Um, everybody loves a good prop, don't they? Uh, anyway, uh, back to um, uh, message from a uh, question from Clive. Clive Franklin, are house builders, e.g. Redro, an end user? Uh, well, Sean, what do you think? Um, I, I mean, I, I would actually direct this one towards Annette. She's an end user expert, so go on, Annette. Fine. Yeah, okay. Sure. Yeah, ha house builders can be an end user. Um, however, if we are talking about new builds, if, if we go back to the presentation, when where we're talking about um, zero rated supplies, um, then the domestic reverse charge will, will not um, be in place. It's only if um, there is a provision of standard rated or reduced rated supplies um, that we will be operating the domestic reverse charge. Okay, thanks Annette. We have had a question saying, are we going to answer any questions that were asked previously? Yes, we will. Don't worry. <laughs> let's uh, let's ask, answer a few now. So these are ones where uh, they were asked for, as part of the registration process. Uh, one from um, Hannah Martin. Um, 
probably one for Sean, isn't it? The implication on VAT returns using Sage 50, the desktop version, will she need to upgrade her software, Sean? Okay. Um, Sage, Sage, Sage has announced um, a new VAT code, code T12, which will deal with the purchase and supply um, standard rated DRC invoices. Um, I think you just need to make sure that you have updated your software and you're running the most recent version of the software um, so that that VAT rate falls into your, falls into the software and is available for use. Um, if, if you're a, a TW client, um, if you contact whoever deals with your bookkeeping, they should be able to direct you towards where, where they are. Um, broadly speaking, if I just expand on that one as well, all the software houses, um, so Sage, QuickBooks, uh, Xero, they, they all said that they are going to be ready for the DRC and there will be specific codes to use when you're raising your sales invoices or inputting your purchase invoices. So they will all be there um, come 1st of March. So they're, they're, they will be there ready for you to use. Okay, and Sean, uh, just Claire's asking, what was the T code for that for Sage as it, uh, it cut out for her? Oh, Sage 50 is T21. There you go. Another one actually for you, uh, Sean. We've had a couple of questions on this. Uh, how to deal with, well, one from Tim Burrow and one from Ian Cook. How to deal with work that crosses the implementation date. So um, if your invoice is dated the 1st of March, but uh, the work was uh, completed in, say, February. So what happens in that situation? Absolutely. So broadly speaking, this will depend on what's known as the tax point of the supplier. So if your tax point is after the 1st of March 21, it's going to be caught by the domestic reverse charge. If the tax point is 20th of February and, and prior, then uh, normal VAT will apply. Understanding your tax point can be quite tricky for, for single contract or one-off work. Generally speaking, the tax point is usually the date that the supply was performed or earlier if it was invoiced and paid prior to the supply happening, or it could be later if it's invoiced within 14 days of the date of supply. So for single contract or for single contract or one-off pieces of work, it should be relatively straightforward to establish a tax point. For um, uh, larger contracts or for continuous supply contracts or applications for payment, where you know there's a lot of this in the construction industry, it's a, it's a big job and you make uh, payment applications um, via the, the stages of build. Um, the tax point is generally going to be the earlier of invoice date or date of payment. But again, there's many intricacies that arise. So please speak to your local TW contract to establish the tax point for, for each payment, because it might not just be on the application, it's going to be for each payment you receive. So yeah, I, I, unfortunately, the answer is, as Annette said, it, it depends. Um, but the answer with a lot of taxes, it, it depends. So we need to understand the, the full scenario so that we can give you a, a, an informed reply rather than it, it should be. Okay, and that applies, I think, to the question I think Megan Prout has raised, will the DRC apply to invoices raised from the 1st of March or payments made from the 1st of March? But uh, Absolutely. Okay. Um, question asked, yeah, the tax point. Question asked from Sharon. Um, and actually she's asked it in the, the Q&A as well as uh, on registration. How does reverse charge affect cash accounting? I know you mentioned it briefly, um, Sean, uh, but did you just want to just to, again, just say, uh, mention it again, just so that uh, yeah. Sharon's clear on this? Uh, absolutely. Um, the, when it comes to the DRC, any, any sales invoices raised or any purchase invoices received via the DR, uh, DRC scheme cannot be reported under cash accounting. Um, fortunately, if you are using one of the larger MTD compliance softwares, so again, your Xero, your Sage, your, your QuickBooks, the VAT codes, if you use them correctly, will ensure if, you're, if the remainder of your VAT return is going to be done under a cash basis, that it will pull in on the invoice basis, the DRC elements. Um, so, you know, it, it may be a case you need to look at the, the wider the wider scheme. If you're wholly DRC, you might just want to change to invoice accounting 
you're going to accelerate that that reclaiming of your input sooner. Um, if only a small proportion, you might as well just continue on as you are. But the softwares will enable a, an almost hybrid um, VAT return to be prepared for you. Thanks, Sean. Uh, one for Annette now. We're uh, from Jane Case, this is. We're a main contractor in the construction industry and use plumbers, electricians, uh, et cetera, that are VAT registered. We would like to know how this will affect us. Does the supplier have to be providing a service or could they be providing goods like windows, that kind of thing? Um, there has to, if we go, if we go back to, to the first question that we always have to ask ourselves, um, does it fall under construction operations? So if they are providing a service because C CIS comes into play, um, then we look to use the domestic reverse charge. That there has to be an actual service um, and then the goods and the services, um, the invoice for those are covered by the domestic reverse charge, but they must fall under the construction operations in order for this to apply. Okay. And one, another one from Ian Cook, actually sort of building on that. Um, can you, if you split the invoice um, as a subcontractor between um, the labour and materials. Um, it's my understanding that you'd have to apply the DRC on both because it's the Absolutely. same Absolutely. Yes, time. you would do. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't separate them, them both out because um, they are part of the whole supply, the goods and the services. Um, the only exception, and we have mentioned this, is where um, the service element, when you, when you look at that, if 5% or less um, applies to the construction operation, then you don't have to apply the domestic reverse charge. So in most case, cases that we are looking at, both the services and goods supplied with the services fall under the domestic reverse charge. Okay. But what happens if, uh, like Baldrick, you've got a cunning plan and you sort of invoice, um, you know, greater than a month apart, would they? I think, yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. But it still, it still applies um, to that specific project that you're working on. So it will be caught by HMRC. So that was from um, Steph Bramfield. So yeah, unlucky Steph. Yeah. Um, Question from Christine Jarrett here. Uh, when the customer is self-billing, do we need to put uh, the actual wording subject to reverse charge? Uh, the VAT or zero rated status is not usually shown until we receive their payment certificate. That's one for Sean, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, with self-billing, you're, you're very much at the mercy of your customer here. So I think you need to enter into the conversation with your customer to begin with, just to make sure you both know whether or not the DRC should be applying to um, this, this engagement. Um, and if it does, when you receive your self-billing billing invoice, you just need to make sure it clearly states, you know, somewhere from on that, that self-billing invoice, your customer has written, we will account for and pay the VAT to HMRC on your behalf. Um, whether or not they do is not your concern. You have covered yourself off because you have a bit of paper to say that your invoice has been, you know, invoiced under the DRC. Thanks, Sean. Um, just trying to get through as many questions as we can. One from Lisa. Lisa heard on the call earlier. For the subcontractor or intermediary, this one for, for you, Annette, I think. Um, materials and, ser and services invoiced. Can you just confirm that the DRC applies to the whole invoice and no output is included? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If it's a construction operation, then the goods that are supplied alongside the services are all caught under the domestic reverse charge. So the entire invoice, yeah, falls under mm -hmm. that domestic reverse charge. Um, where are we now? Um, right. One from Dave Rayner. We're contractors who employ some VAT registered subcontractors. If our client stops the VAT at source, does this mean we will still have to pay out VAT to our VAT registered subcontractors? And he's wondering how this will affect cash flow in this instance. I think that's one for you, Annette, as well. Yes. Um, so if we go back 
to um, our supply chain, a contractor who engages a subcontractor will not be paying across VAT to their subcontractor. The subcontractor will not be invoicing um, VAT um, because of the domestic reverse charge. So if, if you're going back to the subcontractors in that relationship, the domestic reverse charge applies. With your onward supply as a contractor, it depends whether you are being engaged by an end user. And if you are being engaged by an end user, then you will be charging VAT on your invoices. Okay. So hopefully that's answered that question. Thanks, Annette. While you're there, um, uh, question from Environnet um, UK. We use suppliers where sometimes the suppliers um, supplies are in relation to CIS work and sometimes not. Mm -hmm. E.g. sometimes our customers are private individual and sometimes a commercial company under the CIS scheme. Do we have to check every invoice? Um, you, do need, you do need to check invoices if you are a contractor um, because, um, and I mentioned this is a risk, that if you accept an incorrect invoice, you may find that HMRC will disallow any input VAT that you wish to apply for. Um, and if you are making that onward supply, the domestic reverse charge, when you're operating within the construction industry, um, that's the default position. So okay. unless you've been advised to the contrary that you're dealing with an end user, then, then your position always has to be that the domestic reverse charge must apply. So if you receive an invoice, you need to say to yourself, is this a correct invoice? If it's not a correct invoice and you've been charged VAT, then you need to take that back <laughs> to your subcontractor. But likewise, and unless you have that end user statement provided to you, then um, you must yourself apply the domestic reverse charge. Okay, thanks, Annette. Uh, one for Sean. Um, please could I ask what happens? This is from Lynn Bellamy. Please could I ask what happens and what we need to do if we submit for payment uh, through an online application or valuation system, i.e. pay apps? Okay, um, I'm not familiar with pay apps myself, but it sounds like this is, um, you know, a large continuous supply project. So you're going in for stage payments as, as you're going through the, the process. Speak with your customer, find out um, if they agree that all of this should be um, in under the domestic reverse charge. And it almost sounds like a, a self built thing. You go in, submit an application for payment, and then your customer pays you the money, they're either going to pay that to you with VAT or without VAT. Um, and when they send you that authenticated receipt, um, that is going to say whether or not the domestic reverse charge has been applied. Um, at that point, you should establish whether or not it should have should have applied or not. And then you can get in touch with your contractor, your, your customer, sorry, to, to either get them to pay over the VAT or just get them to confirm that they're dealing with the, the VAT on your behalf. Thanks, Sean. And another one for you, actually, from one of my clients, Simon Pierce. Um, hi, Simon. Um, I work in the telecom industry, and a lot of my work is invoiced to a chartered surveyor, the main contractor. Does the reverse charge apply to my invoices to this chartered surveyor uh, and uh, other sort of professional fees, for example, tree surveys and that sort of thing? So that's probably kind of cuts across what you were saying, you guys, earlier about sort of what it does and doesn't apply to in terms of services provided. So, Sean, do you want to field that one? Yeah, absolutely. Like you touched on, for, for the DRC to apply, the works have to be both vatable and scissible. Um, and it's unlikely, if you're invoicing your chartered surveyor, that that payment is going to be reported via the CIS scheme. I mean, do, do please double check that. Um, but in, in my opinion, it's very unlikely that um, your, your relationship with your chartered surveyor is going to go via CIS. Um, so it shouldn't affect these supplies. Um, and you, I, th I 
this is the same chap that asked uh, questions about the telecom industry, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he, he, yeah, I've, I've read through the legislation for him. Um, Final Act 04, uh, Section 74, uh, telecom systems located within buildings will not be caught where the installation does not require substantial alteration or repair to the building or structure. If, however, there are substantial works directly on or within the land rather than in the building, SIS will apply. So I don't know the specifics of his contract and I don't know what work he does, um, but in the building, um, unlikely, outside the building and substantial, then likely. Okay. Um, I'm just going to bring it to an end in a, in a little bit, but just a couple more queries. I know, sorry, we are sort of over time, but um, I would like to get through them all. Um, Again, it's, it's sort of, it's a, a delay, you know, of, uh, of potential jobs. So Christine is saying, uh, we have jobs where there's a supply only, which is vatable, and further down the line, we supply and install. So do we apply DRC on the first one when it might not be in itself, um, you know, applicable? Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, as soon as you um, are satisfied that the first supply falls under CIS, construction operation, then you must apply the domestic reverse charge. Um, the, the default position is um, for that domestic reverse charge to apply. And if you, if you apply that and um, the contractor believes that it shouldn't apply, um, then obviously they will discuss with you um, why they disagree with the way that you've treated that invoice. But in the absence, you know, for avoidance of doubt, HMRC are saying, um, you know, if you're working in the construction industry and CIS is applicable, then you must apply the domestic reverse charge. Better to be safe than sorry. Yeah. And I'm sure someone will come back and um, put you right if that's not the case. Okay, thanks. And finally, just the last couple on the more sort of practical things. Um, uh, Catherine is, is, Ewing is asking, has there been any update on whether you would receive proof from the contract to confirm they have paid the VAT over to HMRC? Uh, similar, she's saying, to a CIS deduction statement. I mean, I'm guessing it's the um, contractor's responsibility, so the subby wouldn't actually get any, wouldn't need any kind of proof, would they? So, but that's right, is it? And, and yeah. Okay. Um, and finally, then, um, Catherine Hitchens is asking, uh, why have employment stroke labour agencies been excluded from it um, and allowed to charge, you know, VAT in a normal way? Do we do we know that, or is it just that's that's where they've drawn the line? Or um, because um, because CIS is is the key. It's always the first step that we look at. Um, if CIS is not in operation. So if, if the engagement is of employment and not for the provision of services under the CIS rules, then that's why um, the reverse uh, domestic charge is not being applied. Okay. It's down to uh, the legislation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that that'll do it. I think uh, we've, we seem to have got through, I think, most of the questions, if not all of them. Um, if you I, I am aware of one more question. Oh, um, it yeah. just came up about end users. Yeah. Um, so hopefully now that I've taken everyone through the definition of an end user, um, that everyone is, is happy that if they are dealing with an end user, the end user will have to notify you. I just, I just wanted to end on that point. All right. Wise words from our stage of the VAT world. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much. And um, I was going to say, if, if you don't feel we've answered your question or you want more detail, you still can ask us a question or, or say the same one again. Uh, write to us at events at thomaswestcott.co.uk or you can contact your normal TW um, partner or contact there or you can contact Annette or Sean, especially again, if you want uh, a more bespoke um, sort of uh, program uh, relevant to your business. Um, 
Elise has put the link to the survey, so please complete that because it does help us frame the webinars going forward. We do have another webinar uh, on the 4th of March, which given the budgets on the 3rd of March, unsurprisingly it's about the budget, so do uh, tune in for that. Um, and finally, I'd like to um, thank our speakers, Annette and Sean. Um, judging by the amount of people still on the call, uh, they've obviously done a cracking job and you haven't switched off. So um, thank you to them and thank you to our lovely attendees and all the TW staff who've been watching. Get back to work, you lot. And um, we'll uh, ch and check out the next webinar on the 4th. So um, this remains for me to say thanks again. And as usual, embracing my inner Ron Burgundy, stay safe, Devon and Somerset. Cheers for now. <laughs>